today in this lecture we are going to start discussing the reabsorption and secretion of electrolytes along the different segments of nephrons. We know that nephrons have different segments, the proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, then collecting ducts. So far we have been uh, discussing filtration pro process and reabsorption process and we have discussed in detail the, the different methods for reabsorption, the active methods and the passive methods through which sodium, chloride, urea, creatinine, potassium, etc. are reabsorbed actively or passively or not at all reabsorbed. Now we will discuss those uh, reabsorption and uh, secretion processes for different segments of the nephron. So the first and most important part, the most important segment is the proximal tubule. This uh, blue color segment is the proximal tubule. See, the filtration, when the filtration process starts, when the filtration process starts, the blood comes and it gets filtered into the Bowman's capsule. The filtrate initially enters the proximal tubule and this is basically the first segment of the nephron. Now. Here we see this is basically the proximal, this blue color area is the proximal tubule and here we have the Bowman's capsule and the blood vessels and this area, this small area has been enlarged here. Now around 65%, around 65% of water, around 65% of water, sodium and chloride are reabsorbed along the proximal tubule. Apart from that, a lot of other ions are reabsorbed from the proximal tubule. So there are many segments, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle and distal tubule, but 65% of water, sodium, chloride are reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. Now what is so special about the proximal tubule? There are three important things in the proximal tubules. If we enlarge the proximal tubule cells, this is the proximal tubule and if we enlarge the cells, the cells will look like this. These, these are cells of the proximal tubule and there are few special things about these uh, cells and special things about the proximal tubule. First of all, the mitochondria the mitochondria in the cells of the proximal tubule are in large number. These cells have a lot of mitochondria and mitochondria are basically the powerhouse of cells and they basically produce ATP. Now this ATP is basically utilized by this sodium potassium pump which generates energy and this energy is basically used to throw the sodium out and throw the potassium into the cells and this decreases the concentration of sodium in the cell because the sodium is thrown out. So concentration of sodium decreases and sodium from the tubule can get entry into the cell and when sodium is entering into the cell it can bring its uh, its friends like glucose, amino acids or chloride into the cell. So there are a lot of mitochondria which are the powerhouse and which are basically involved in the production of ATP which is basically known as the energy currency or because the ATPs are basically utilized by the sodium potassium pump to generate energy and to throw out sodium. So this is one thing, this is one thing which makes the proximal tubule special and which helps the proximal tubule to absorb up to 65% of sodium and water in the proximal tubule. Now the second thing is that the surface area for, for the proximal tubule has been enlarged so many times. Now if you see this is the cell membrane and it is pretty much plain. The basolateral membrane is pretty much plain. But the tubular, the membrane in the tubule, in this portion, is having this brush water. So there is a brush water in the proximal tubules and this brush water basically increases the surface area for reabsorption of different solutes and solvents. So if sodium starts uh, reabsorbing uh, into these proximal tubule cells along the uh, basal or lateral membranes there is only just one small part along which reabsorption can occur but on the tubular side on the tubular lumen here is a brush border in which these small structures projections are present and these projections basically the brush border increases the surface area for absorption for reabsorption so many times so this is uh, the second thing this is the second thing which basically increases the absorption along the proximal tubule which increases the reabsorption process along the proximal tubule. As we keep on discussing different uh, lectures, we will then discuss the reabsorption along the loop of Henle and then reabsorption along the uh, distal tubule and collecting ducts as well. So today we are discussing the proximal tubule and the things which make the proximal tubule special. So first was mitochondria, second is the brush water, the third thing is the presence of the carrier proteins. See, these carrier proteins are present in the proximal tubules and these proximal tubule, uh, sorry, these carrier proteins also help in the increased absorption of water, sodium, glucose, amino acid, etc. in the proximal tubule. Because if there is no carrier proteins, then the reabsorption of sodium will be very much difficult. Although the energy is ultimately provided by the sodium potassium pump, which is basically creating a concentration gradient and electrical gradient for the sodium to get reabsorbed. But the reabsorption process is further uh, sorry, uh, facilitated with carrier proteins and the brush borders. So these are three special things which basically helps in increasing the reabsorption process along the proximal tubule. Mitochondria, brush border, carrier proteins. Now if we talk about the carrier proteins, even these carrier proteins may be different along the, uh, the proximal tubule. So if we talk about the proximal tubule, in the early proximal tubule, the reabsorption will be different and in the late proximal tubule, 
the reabsorption of substances will be different. For example, in the early segment of the proximal tubule, suppose for example, in the early, if this is proximal tubule, in the early segment, in this portion, there is high absorption of sodium with glucose. But in this uh, subsequent, the further uh, lower down segment of the proximal tubule, there is a reabsorption of sodium along the with, along with chloride. So even inside the proximal tubule, the reabsorption is further divided uh, due to the different types of carrier proteins which may be either uh, co-transporter or counter-transporter. So initially the reabsorption of sodium and glucose is with a co-transport and then and then uh, there is the reabsorption of sodium with the counter-transport in which the hydrogen is thrown out and then finally the concentration of chloride increases, concentration of glucose decreases, then the reabsorption of sodium is with the chloride. So these are different factors which through different uh, methods helps in increased absorption of sodium, water, glucose, chloride along the proximal tubule and up to 65% of reabsorption occur in the proximal tubule. And these are the factors which help in increasing the, this percentage. So that's all about the uh, uh, proximal tubule. Then we will uh, talk about the uh, secretion along the proximal tubule and uh, then uh, slowly and gradually we will discuss the loop of Henle, the distal tubule and the collecting ducts. Thanks a lot for watching the video.